<laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Paint Society. Now this episode is an episode I've waited so long to make and it's finally here. It's the home garage. We've done tons of work. A lot of you guys have been asking, Brian, give me an update. Well, I've been getting everything together to give you this great update and we have so much more in store for you guys on following episodes. Now, let's talk about what has happened since the very beginning. Now this garage was a three car garage with an option to put a bedroom in the house when it was built. And many people took that option and some didn't, but this particular house did have the room and you can see right here in the corner, that is the room and well, we got all the concrete dug out. It was on six inches of concrete and you can see the ceiling still had that knockdown. Now we'll address this later on in the video, but this is the beginnings of the garage taking its first shape. Now, once it came to paint, well, I wanted a color that really reflected well, was a little bit light, but not too dark, and still gave it that garage feel. So I ended up going with the color Sight White. It's a white, but a light, light, light white, almost grayish. And it's a beautiful color. I ended up actually using this color in some of the bathrooms in the homes. The Sherwin Williams color, Sight White. Now, this color we put down <laughs> in, the, in the thick of the night. Whenever we had a chance, we just wanted to get the walls covered because we weren't concerned about the top, the ceiling, because the ceiling was going to go ahead and get done. So we weren't concerned about getting any paint up there because it still had to get scraped. So Carl and I, we, we went to work and we got pretty much all the paint work done and getting it ready for the next phase. Now throughout the whole process, my wife has been a great deal of help and just an extra hand of getting the paint down. And this paint took two full coats to get it completely covered, but we ended up doing it together in one night. Now there's still some parts of the garage that still need some paint, but we want to do the majority of the areas that will be covered by the toolboxes that we will not be able to get to at a later date. So we took our time one night and got pretty much 80% of the actual garage painted and then we come back and we'll finish it up at another time. We also decided to stick with our white ceiling um, and the white garage doors because I know the trend right now is black on the ceiling, but we wanted to keep it all nice and reflective and clean and a good studio for recording videos that you all will have a good chance at learning as well. really needed to attack the ceiling. Now we're supposed to do things from the top down and things kind of got out of order with the garage build, but it still all really worked out. Now for the ceiling, what we needed to do is I had the original room that's right behind me to my right and that still had the knockdown finish on it. And well, the rest of the ceiling in the garage had a popcorn finish on it. So the guys came in and God, these guys work so hard, so, so hard two days straight just scraping the popcorn that was quick but floating the whole entire ceiling they floated it it came out good and the reason why i did it flat ceiling is because well if i need to ever drill into the ceiling or do anything it's easy patch i don't have to worry about knockdown and i did go with white because it's much easier to you know see things and reflect i know black is a trend but anyways let's take a look at all the work that needed to be done
<laughs> now, after the ceiling was done, I had to get this place lit up. You know, I work a lot during the day, but a lot at night, and the lighting in here was not sufficient. You had electrical run through PVC, through the past owner, and things were not done properly. So what we went ahead and did is I contacted the company. If you're familiar with Bodhi Vision, he actually used the same light, Hyperlight. They said, Brian, how can we get you set up? And we ended up going with six radar series high bay lights that are 100 watts or about 70 bucks. We're actually gonna put the information in the description so you guys can go ahead and take a look. And I've gotta say, these lights are solid. They're easy to install. I had my electrical um, guy come out, Bruce. He came up here, he installed all the lights. And I've gotta say, this place is like daytime at night. Some of the best lights you probably can buy on the market for your garage and relatively cheap when it comes to all the actual light that it puts out and it's really easy to install. So let's go ahead and take a look at what Bruce did. He ran all the electrical and then he gave me electrical boxes at every single unit for the light. It came out really good. And after the install, you can see how great they look. Bruce did an awesome job with the electrical. These things are bright. I can only look at them through the camera lens because they are very, very blinding. Now, you could go with four, but we did end up going with two more just to make sure we light up the place, and especially when the garages are closed. You know, due to the configuration of the garage, it does cover these, but they still shine through quite a lot to give you good lighting while you're working at night. Let's go ahead and turn them off. And with the flip of a switch, this place is completely lit up. I'm very, very, very pleased with how the lighting situation came out. It was a big deal to me. Um, Hyperlight really came through and helped me out with this project. And I really could not be any happier with how they look. So make sure you check them out in the description and maybe you can get your garage lit up this easily as well. Super easy. They plug right into your electrical and you're good to go. They also supplied me with two capsule style uh, lights that we are end up going to use these in the paint booth. So in the future, once we get to the booth getting set up, the, the inflatable booth, I know those booths can get very, very dark. So a lot of guys complain about the lighting in those booths. So we're gonna go ahead and rig something up so we can always temporarily use these lights in the booth. So we'll go ahead, I'll put these in the description as well if you guys are interested. We we're originally gonna go with these on the ceiling, but I like the way that the high bay look, uh, lights look, nice and circular and round, and they actually do even better when they're higher up. You know, uh, the ceilings here, uh, we're pushing nine feet, but the higher they are, they do a much better job of lighting. <laughs> now, after the last video on the garage, we left off on the floor, and it looked beautiful, but with that particular floor, it doesn't work for a home garage. That particular floor is a silver metallic epoxy style finish, and you literally have to never walk on it if you want it to look it's just as good as the day 
it was poured. And I kid you not, I was on the floor buffing it with my rotary buffer because there were swirls. I was driving myself insane. And the company that did it, they were, they were fantastic and they did as best as they could with what we had. And I kind of knew in the back of my mind what finish I really needed. A finish just like this that doesn't show any defects in the floor, that won't show any scratches, that you can be a little rough and tough with, and that's exactly what I did. So the company came back out, um, and you know, this was all a waiting game. That's why you guys have been waiting for this update in the video. They came back out, and they, um, they stand at the floor again, and of course I couldn't have anything in here, and when they stand at the floor, um, then they went with their regular process of doing the flakes. Now, it wasn't all in vain because the processes of redoing the floor one or two times with the original silver metallic finish, well, it helped smooth out the floor. So when this epoxy finish went down, epoxy flake finish went down, it went down phenomenal. Nice and smooth, nice and even. It's kind of like flow coating, a clear coating a car. When you have that clear on clear, it just lays down phenomenally. So what they ended up doing is they put down those flakes and then they scraped it the next day. And then once they scraped it, they blew it all off and then they put this really nice clear coat on it. So it's super easy to clean. Everything glides right off of it. They also offer another service where they're saying they would come and scuff it up a little bit and then they would put another coat of clear. But uh, that would be even smoother. You have to sign a waiver with it. And this has got like a smooth grip to it. It's not that bad. It's really, really nice. And honestly, it's more fitting for that of uh, this style of garage. And I'm happy I did it. The other one looked cool, but really, in essence, once uh, you moved anything on here, it was gouging, it was scraping, it was, it was not good. And you could still see a little shadowing of where the new cement was, where this room originally was. And I was extremely happy with the finish. We still have a couple things coming in, mats, and a lot of cool little accents to put on the wall. But we really needed to get focusing on these actual units I wanted to put in a garage. Now, I learned a lot and I reached out to some of you guys and I asked, you know, the Husky of the new age. And these are some of Home Depot's Husky's newer brand that they have or newest edition. And I've got to say, I made the right choice. It was a long time coming because these came in very damaged. See, what ends up happening is this unit right here, well, the, um, the chest underneath, they get shipped inside of here and this ends up becoming like a crate, a shipping container that gets banged up and this thing's over five, 600 pounds once everything is in it. So this is the Husky six piece and the reason why I love it is because of the drawers. These units scream quality. Now I got these 50% um, off. Um, one of my subscribers mentioned to me, he said, Brian, they got 50% off. Go take a look, I ordered them right away. I had to. Now inside, they actually, um, each one is lined with the, uh, the Husky mat, which is really cool. And they're all soft clothes, okay? Now I'm still kind of moving in here, so there's some that are empty, there's some that are not empty, but they all close beautifully. They all look great. Your bottom drawer is a little bit um, bigger than the other ones. And if you're at a shop, they do have lock on them. So um, they do handle the weight of what's ever in, what's ever is in there very well. Now, the one thing I love about these is the top that it brings, that butcher board type top that's you know very strong and stylish at the same time. It comes with a stainless steel. You can get as an option. I'm not sure if it comes with on, on these toolboxes, but it's an option that you can put over it and bolt into the sides here. But I've heard the stainless steel is flexible and it scratches very easily. Now this is a second unit that came in. You can see it's all damaged in this area, but you know, the first was even worse because this was all completely caved in. So Home Depot has been great. Unfortunately, there's a, there's a back order of about six months. I'm getting this door replaced and another one. So I'll just kind of hang out for now. I figured this is okay, we can replace this, but the actual body we can't replace. It's actually dented in another area down below, but you can't see it because it's hidden, obviously. Now these are really, really strong, really big, and they hold a lot of different things. So I've got some of, the, some of my tools in here for now. The one thing that I really love about this is I actually took the drawer from the other side. It will come with one drawer. I took the drawer from the other side, and I'll show you why. But uh, they all have drawers in them that you can use, and the strong, uh, the um, shelves are super, super strong. It's, it's built very well. 
I also like the fact that, you know, the side has pegboard all up on it. So if you want to hang any of your tools. Now, being in the garage and this particular garage, I really wanted to create that shop environment. That means we can't have any of the baby's toys in here. We can't have any of the garden tools. We can't have anything showing because I want to create that type of environment that this is where we learn and work on cars, you know? And so I took this other um, storage unit here and that's where I removed all the shelves that I had added to this one and I stacked them all up in here. So any of the garden stuff, you know, anything that's not in the shed in the back, it can be used here and we don't have them hanging up on the wall, uh, distracting us from <laughs> what the focus is here is wor working on cars. So I really wanted to create that environment here and uh, you know, I'm really happy the way that it's turning out. These are very strong. Once again, these, uh, they have a lock on them so you don't have to worry. And one of these is damaged as well. We can see the damage in this area and it just nicked the uh, area right here. But Home Depot was great. They gave me a little refund for that and I'm, I have no complaints. Now, it also comes with the top units. Now, I did not put them there because I love the window and when you block the window, it's kind of weird because it only blocks about the top portion and, we're, and there's some still on top, some window on top, and we just replaced all the windows and everything's nice. So I want to have that view still into the backyard. So what I end up doing is I, you know, I actually had tried them here, the smaller ones, and I still have to take that down. Didn't like the way it looks. So I ended up putting them a little bit higher and we have them all there for storage for things that we don't really need. Now, when it comes down to this unit, this was the six piece, and this is 100, 152 inches, I believe, and I end up getting an 109 as well. I want to have a lot of work areas. I um, want everything away, I don't want anything on the floor. I want everything nice and clean. So I have everything kind of divided. This will end up being the paint area where I keep all the paint products. Um, you can see we have a whole bunch of these uh, 2K aerosol cans because we're going to be doing a lot, a lot of of spray can videos coming up in the future. So this will be the spray area. Um, we have a lot of reviews coming up as far as uh, Eastwood. They sent us this, um, this paint gun that works extremely well with small air compressors. You see between five and nine CFM. I requested uh, getting this and uh, I will, can't wait to do a video on that. And alongside with this, it also comes with the option to put this, um, this wood piece on top. So this is not a part of the actual uh, storage cabinets. Okay, this butcher block, uh, you can buy to put it on top as well. Now when it comes down to my work environment, I wanted the biggest space possible. So I ended up going with those same units that I have on the other side of the garage. And I need a nice big area. So Husky actually makes um, this workbench that's adjustable in height. It's a pretty good price. All these things I bought myself, there's, there's no um, sponsorship or anything like that, but there was some pretty good deals from Home Depot. And I ended up kind of piecing things together. This is the pegboard. <clears throat> now this pegboard will go onto one of their um, toolboxes, but I ended up just making it work on the back of this workbench here. So I wanted to create enough space so I could sit down and kind of do my thing and work on our next project which will be plumbing the air compressor with this rapid air system that I just bought. And I can't wait to see how well it works. Now, speaking of rapid air, we're going to talk about the compressor in just a moment. So this is the Eastwood 3060 scroll compressor. Now it's not yet hooked up. I haven't done the induction period. We just ran a 220 to get it to work. Now I can't wait to see how well it actually works. Um, I've gone on YouTube and I've seen some issues with this actual, actual compressor as far as, you know, leaking oil and a lot of work that has needed to be done with this one. So we're going to keep you guys updated with that along the way, but it's nicely tucked into the corner. Uh, I'm going to do a formal video about this on how to set up your paint compressor and how to set up your airlines, but it's super quiet. I'll just turn it on for a moment here and basically I can talk over it with absolutely no issues. So I'm not gonna keep it running because I haven't done that induction period time yet, but. Basically what we'll see on the channel is us getting this set up and how we're gonna use it for paint and how we're gonna use it for sanding. But we're not gonna use it too much for sanding because I went and bought another treat. 
So I ended up buying the 3M Extract. You know, there was a lot of people that recommended the Festool, but this is a newer unit that's out. And with the Festool, there's so many different combinations. You gotta buy this, you gotta buy that. And this is just simple. It seems to be that you just hook it up and you're good to go. And everything should be compatible if you're buying the 3M. And now we'll get hooked up to the 3M Extract. So I'm hoping that there's not gonna be any dust really. And that's exactly what the plans are for this floor here. Now, I know you guys have probably noticed it in the video, but you'll have to stay tuned to our next video when we go ahead and we install this Max Jack lift in our home garage. Completely portable, an amazing lift. And thank you so much for joining me again on the video. We still have our inflatable booth that we're gonna set up in the future here to show you how it works. I have a lot of great information coming from the home garage. So you guys at home, if you do it yourselfers, get a chance at completing your project yourself. Guys, I'm Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it. It's just paint. See you guys on the next one.